Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So you may have heard that there was a solar flare that flared up from the sun on February 17th. But what you may not have heard was that this was no ordinary solar flare. I mean, solar flares occur on the sun all the time, but this was an X-class flare. And apparently it was so big that it caused a solar tsunami across the surface of the sun, unleashed a serious burst of radiation, and caused some radio blackouts here on Earth. And when I see the word solar tsunami, you know, I gotta get in there, see what all that's about. So yeah. Let's get into it. So solar flares are large explosions from the surface of the sun that emit intense bursts of electromagnetic radiation. And according to NASA, the sun is sort of a magnetically mixed up place. Magnetic fields are created from electrically charged gases generating electrical currents that act as a magnetic dynamo or generator inside the sun. These magnetic fields move and twist around due to the turbulent nature of the gases that create them, and this is known as solar activity. Now, when this solar activity builds up due to this magnetic energy, it triggers solar flare eruptions that release vast amounts of electromagnetic radiation a form of energy that includes radio waves, microwaves, x-rays, etc. And these solar flares have a class system, kind of like the Fujita scale for tornadoes. I'm sure most of you have heard of tornadoes being dubbed F2, F3, with F5 being the most powerful. Well, in the world of solar flares, X-class flares are considered the most powerful in terms of the intensity of their explosion. This is followed by M-class, C-class, B-class, and finally A-class. And according to the University Corporation for Atmospheric Research, these flares can be visible as bright flashes of light in a particular region and can last for several minutes. And they tend to come from regions on the sun that contain sunspots, which are darker, cooler portions of the solar surface where the magnetic fields are particularly strong. So the number of sunspots can indicate the likelihood of a solar flare eruption. So there's this cool website called spaceweather.com and it tracks solar flares and it reported an X-class flare coming from a sunspot designated AR3229 on February 17th. Apparently solar storm forecasters from NOAA had predicted a minor chance of an X-class flare that day but they believe the threat would come from a much larger sunspot somewhere else. As a result, astronomers were caught off guard by the stellar blast. The flare triggered a rare type of shock wave known as a solar tsunami, which rippled across the sun's surface, or photosphere. A solar tsunami is also known by scientists as a fast mode magnetohydrodynamical wave. Woo! <laughs> Had to practice that one a couple of times, but it's uh, it's basically a giant wave of hot plasma that can travel up to 560,000 miles per hour across the photosphere, according to NASA. Now they actually have video of this from the Solar Dynamics Observatory, where they say that you can actually kind of see the shock wave going across the surface of the sun. I had to watch it a couple of times before I could really see it, so I'll play it a few times in a row here, and let me know if you guys can see it. And the flare also emitted a type 2 solar radio burst, which is a stream of ultraviolet and x-ray radiation, which is basically like an F2 in terms of strength. And this hit Earth shortly after the flare erupted. The radiation ionized the upper atmosphere, causing minor radio blackouts across parts of the Americas for about an hour, according to spaceweather.com. And they have a graphic here that shows the area of Earth that was affected. So I think there might have been some radio operators in the Pacific Ocean that day that are like, what the? Now, while solar flares are pretty common on the sun, X-class flares only occur on average about 10 times per year. But apparently in 1989, a very large solar flare, which had the energy of thousands of nuclear bombs exploding at the same time, 
exploded out of the sun. A storm cloud rushed out of the sun and hit the earth two days later, plunging the entire province of Quebec, Canada into an electrical blackout that lasted 12 hours, according to NASA. The solar eruption triggered a geomagnetic storm on earth, resulting in aurora borealis, or the northern lights, that could be seen as far south as Florida and Cuba. And solar flares can create trouble in other ways. Solar radiation storms emitting fast-moving charged particles can endanger astronauts and Earth-orbiting spacecraft. During these storms, astronauts on the International Space Station need to seek shelter, and all activities outside the station are paused. Radiation-sensitive systems on satellites are powered down until the radiation storm has passed. So it's important to NASA to study these solar flares, to have a good sense of when and where they might flare up. Such a dad joke. Man, I'm disappointed in myself. And this makes sense, because even if we are, on average, about 93 million miles away from the sun, I think we should be watching out for solar tsunamis. <laughs> if for no other reason than just to see the awesome footage. Okay guys, that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Were you familiar with solar tsunamis? That's not an expression I'd heard of before, but I really like it. <laughs> and now, I think I have a name for my first album. Thanks for watching, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video.